Okay, so here we go. So, so I encourage you to take the notes. This will be the exact same kind of question you get. You just change the numbers a little bit. This is number one in section 3.1. So we're going to do chapter three this week. The, you know, if you have the schedule, chapter three this week, chapter four next week. And, uh, and then the Tuesday after that's our practice exam. And then the week after that's the real exam. So a couple weeks on chapter three and four. All right, Carmen and Jorge jointly buy chocolate strawberry mousse cake for 72 bucks. Uh, Carmen values chocolate three times as much as she values strawberry, use information, blah, blah, blah. All right, find the dollar value to Carmen of the chocolate half of the cake. Okay, so, again, this chapter is all about fair division. And to, to divide things fairly, you have to know what it's worth to people. Remember, different people feel differently about things, right? Not everybody has the same feelings. So the real trick here is going to be to put on the glasses of the other person. So we want to, we want to cut this cake, but let's, let's, let's get dialed in with how Carmen is feeling. Carmen is looking at this strawberry, half strawberry, half chocolate cake. And remember, how, remember her value system. She values chocolate three times as much as she likes strawberry. So therefore, if you, if you just cut the cake right in the middle, just like boom, right in the middle, and said, all right, Carmen, you know, I'll give you the strawberry half. She wouldn't feel that's fair. Even though she got half the cake, that's not fair value to her, right? Because she thinks chocolate's better. So she would think, I didn't get half the value. According to my value system, that's not half the worth. That's not half the value. That's how she'd feel. Specifically, let me just draw it kind of flat here. How much, so this is the strawberry, and this is the chocolate. How much does she think the chocolate half is worth? Well, I got the answer there, 54 bucks. How did I come up with that? Well... She likes chocolate three times as much, right? But I don't know what that is right now. You know what I could do? What, what do you do in like algebra when they say something's three times in a word problem? 3x, exactly. Just stick a 3x there in the chocolate and an x on the strawberry. So far, so good, because she likes chocolate three times as much as strawberry. And then you can write a little simple equation. I know you all can do this algebra. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do any fancy algebra at all. Just keep it simple. Just add those up together. That's the whole cake, right? The X and the 3X. It's the whole cake. And what is that total? What's the total of the whole cake? That's the 72, right? That's what the cake costs. That's expensive cake, isn't it? Maybe it's a wedding cake or something. Well, they'd be more, huh? So anyway, 72. All right, and now we just solve that little equation for X. Remember how to do that from algebra? What do you do? I'll remind you of that kind of stuff. What do you do with X plus 3X? Remember adding like terms for that kind of thing? Does it make... Does it make 3x squared? No, that's multiplying. Do you remember that's when you times them? We're just adding 1x and, th 1x and 3x. It's just 4x, you probably remember. Right? You just add the numbers in the front. It's just 4x. Last step is divide by 4. No, it is 18. Thank you. 18. Now, what does that mean about my answers? Well, that means x is 18. So you go back up, and everywhere you've got x, you just stick in 18. So that means 18 for the strawberry half, 3 times 18, which is that 54 for the chocolate half. That means, according to Carmen's value system, the strawberry half of the cake is worth 18 bucks to her, and the uh, chocolate half of the cake is worth 54 bucks. See, that's three times as much, and the total is still $72. That's how she values things. That's her value system. So Carmen, the chocolate half is worth 54 bucks to her. Make sense? So if we're going to divide this cake fairly... According to Carmen's value system, what, what would be fair? Well, the whole cake's worth 72 bucks, so half is a divide by two in your calculator, 36. So we got to give Carmen something that is worth 36 bucks to her, right? That would be fair to her. You with me? Get the idea of fair division to Carmen's value system? That's the trick here. It's a little bit tricky. We want to cut this cake, and of course, you could just go like that. You know, that would do it. I mean, there's some simple answers, but there won't always be simple answers like that. Let's, let's move on. Find the dollar value of the strawberry half. We already did. That's 18. That's the strawberry half. Find the dollar value of the slice of strawberry cake shown to the right. That right there. So we're talking about that right there. So now, we got a 60-degree angle. We're not going to do any fancy geometry either. Do you remember how many degrees in the whole circle? 360. Yeah. That's about all you need to know. So 360 all the way around. So... Halfway around then is how much? 180. Do you remember that kind of thing? So here, let me, if I can erase this algebra stuff here. And then 
Yeah, so halfway around, like the whole strawberry, this is strawberry, right? Yeah. The whole, if we did the whole strawberry, like if this is the central angle, then this is a 180 degree angle right there. Let me make that a little better. It's a 180 degree angle right there. That would be if we gave Carmen the whole strawberry half, we'd be giving her a 180 degree piece of strawberry cake, right? We're only giving her 60. You see the angle? What part is that? It's a third, isn't it? You with me? It's just 60 over 180, or which is just a third if you reduce it. You know, divide top and bottom by 60. So we're giving her one third of, so let me just write that, one third of the strawberry part. Right? When we give her a 60 degree strawberry section, we're giving her one third of the whole strawberry half. So we're giving her, like bringing, kind of going all over the place here, we're giving her one third, you know, of in math always means times. Whenever you say one-third of something, it's one-third times. So one-third of, one-third times, what? The strawberry. And what's the whole or the half strawberry worth? It's off the screen now. It's 18, right? Wasn't it 18? One-third of 18, which comes out to be six bucks, which is the answer we got. You okay? Do you see what I did there at the end? So I said, this is one-third of the whole strawberry part. 60 degrees is one-third of 180. All right, 60 over 180, one-third. One third, one third of, one third times the strawberry half. One third times 18. And when you calculate, you can just go 18 divided by 3, right? With the number on the bottom, just divide. Six bucks. So that means this little 60 degree strawberry chunk to Carmen in her value system, would, she'd say, well, that's worth six bucks to me. That's what she thinks it's worth. Is that good on that? All right, I want to try, uh, find the dollar value to Carmen of the slice of chocolate cake to the right. It's a 45 degree. Let me give you a second. I mean, you can see the answer right here, $13.50, right? See if you can come up with that. Let me give you just a second. See if you can, what you would do and come up with $13.50 is the right answer. See, see how, if you can figure out how we did that. I'll give you just a second. 45 degree chocolate piece. We good? Is that, is that making sense? Let me erase this here. Um, okay. Um, so it's uh, so 45. 45 is um, it's half a 90, which is half a 180, so it's actually one-fourth of the 180. If you can just do all that, fine. More, more formally, we would say 45 degrees over 180. You could just do that if you want. It's going to come out to be a fourth. Just take your calculator, divide by 45, divide by 45, one-fourth. So this is one-fourth of the chocolate piece. You might have already, if you can just look at that and you know it's a fourth, great. You know, you don't need to be so formal about it. If you can just look at that and go, look, that's half, 45 degrees, you know, is half a 90, which is half a 180. So that's a fourth of the whole chocolate half. So it's one-fourth of the chocolate. So it's of his times. And what's the chocolate worth? 54, yeah. I'll bring it over here, yeah. 54. So it's one four. So it's just 54 divided by 4, which is, oh, it's 1350. That's, that's why that answer's there. Thir so to her, that this 45-degree chocolate piece is worth $13.50. Is that making sense, how we're doing that? Let's take in that portion. Anything I can answer? On that, all right. Keep... Okay, so let me just put the uh, maybe the Z. Well, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite it here. Alex, Betty, and Cindy, and then we have X and Y. And Z, like that. Okay, and then I'll just I'm just rec I'm just writing this bigger so I can see it better. Thirty two, twenty nine. What these percents mean is there, there's some cake which we're not seeing. There's just some cake, you know, and 
and somebody cut it into pieces X, Y, and Z, like that. I don't know exactly what they did, but there's, there's some cake, and they cut it somehow into three pieces, X, Y, and Z. And then each of these people, Alex, Betty, and Cindy, is, is sharing how they feel about the pieces. So, coming on down here. In other words, Alex thinks that piece X is worth 32% of the value. And he thinks that piece Y is worth 37% of the value. We don't know what he thinks about Z. We're going to try to figure that out. How, how, are, we, how are we going to find Z? Out of 100. Out of 100. Exactly, right? Just add these up and subtract from 100. So let's find all the Zs. But I just want to let you know what this information even means. This is, and that's supposed to be a 3 down there. This is how they feel. And, they, you know, they have different feelings. Like, like we talked about, different, people have different values, right? Might be chocolate, strawberry, more frosting, less frosting, edge piece, not edge piece, whatever. Right about what they like and don't like and prefer and don't prefer about the different pieces and the value according to them. So anyway, to find the Z's, let's go ahead and just subtract from 100. So, so 100 percent, you know, minus 32 minus 37. That's whatever that is. 31. So what is 31? Thank you. 31 percent. And then same thing here. 100 minus 29 minus 35. Whatever that is, goes here. Is that 50, 64, is it 36? 36. Did I do that right? Yeah. Okay. And then 100 minus 23 minus 35 goes here. Oh, it is, thanks. 42%. Is everybody good with that? How I got the Z's there? This is 31. So now we know how they feel about the missing... The third piece, Z, just subtracting from 100. Okay. Now, if, say, say I had um, 90 bucks, and I was going to divide it evenly among three people, what would be a fair share for three people? For, I mean, well, how much would each person get, to be fair? 30. Well, 30 bucks. You just right away correct, and you're dividing by three, huh? If there's only two people... What would be a fair share? 45, because you divide by 2. So my point is, however many people is what you divide by, and you know that, huh? That's what, that's what it means to be fair. When we say fair, we mean divided evenly by the number of people breaking up the whatever it is, the cake or the land or the inheritance or the different things we'll get to. So, okay, so in this case, how many players in the game? Three, ABC, Alex, Betty, Cindy. So fair would be, and this one's all about percentages instead of money, same, same deal though. So fair in this problem will be 100% because it's not money. They're not giving us a big cake worth whatever. It's, it's percentage. So 100% divided by 3, what does that come out to be? 33.3, and that, you know, the 3 goes forever. Percent, right? So that's fair in this problem anyway. So we always take the total value of the whatever divided by the number of people to get the fair mark, to get what they would think is fair. Because that's going to be the big deal. We want everybody to feel fairly treated when we're done. Fair division, the name of the chapter. Okay, so um, therefore, I'm going, to I'm going to go back up to this table now, and I'm going to circle all the pieces that would be fair. Any piece that is 33.3 .3 or more will be fair. 33 will not be fair. 33.3 or more will be fair, right? So 32, no, that's not fair. 37, that's fair. 31, nope. 29, nope. 35, yeah. 36, yeah. 23, no. 35, yeah. 42, yeah. So I just circled all the fair pieces in their value systems. Any piece that was 33.3 .3 or more. So let me dial into reality with you. In other words, here's how Alex feels. Alex is looking at that cake, that X, Y, Z, however it looks, and he's saying, I think piece X is worth 32% of the value. I think piece Y is worth 37%, and piece Z is worth 31%. So Alex is thinking, hey, if I got my hands on piece Y, I would feel like I got a fair deal because I got 37% of the value, which is you know fair, 33.3 .3 or more. It's fair. But if you give me X or, y, X or Z... That's under 33, Ain't only a little bit, but still, that's under 33.3, .3, and I'm going to feel I did not get a fair share. 
if Alex gets X or Z. He will not feel he got a fair deal. Right? That makes sense? Anything under 33.3 is not a fair share to them. So I circled all the pieces that they would accept as fair share pieces. So that's, that's what they're going to ask. Which of the three slices are fair to Alex? You know, it's um, Y only. So I bubbled, checked the Y. Which of the pieces are fair to Betty? Betty likes Y or Z, right? So I don't know where I... Anyway, it's off the screen. It's over here. But anyway, and which are fair to Cindy? Cindy likes Y or Z also. There it is, Y and Z for Cindy. Good so far? It's going to ask us which ones they think are fair. Any 133.3 or better. Okay, I'll keep moving on that if you're okay with that. D down there says, so is it possible, is there a way with, you know, pieces X, Y, and Z to give out the pieces in such a way that everybody feels they got a fair shake, got a fair deal. There's not, is there? Because nobody wants piece X. Huh? Nobody thinks piece X is fair. So there's no, and, and at least they're going to have to recut it, is the point. They'd have to, I don't know, glob it back together and recut it. I don't know if you can do that with a cake. But this cutting of the cake isn't going to work for these three people and how they value things. Anybody that gets piece X, will think they didn't get a fair piece. In all their value systems, they all think piece X is not fair. It's less than 33.3%. So no, there's no way to make this one fair. You'd have to recut the cake some different way. Uh, so that, that's the last question they ask. Does that make sense on that? It's not. There's no way to make fair with this cut for these people and their value system. Let's write that down. Got the money here, so we got A, B, C, and D, and and the money. Then we ask a bunch of questions. So, okay, I'm gonna go A, B, C, and D. If I can squeeze them in here, and then we have X, Y. So have X, Y, Z, and W. So and then, okay, X, Y, Z, and W like that. Okay, so um, X, Y, so X, Y, Z, and W are the slices, aren't they? Yeah, four slices. So there's some big cake, and they cut them, however, X, Y, Z, and W. So there's some big cake, they cut it into four pieces, not evenly, necessarily, just some way, I don't know how, they cut X, Y, Z, and W, and then they're asking people A, B, C, and D, A, Betty, Corey, and Dana, how much do you think those pieces are worth? You know, and I'll just, I'm going to rewrite the numbers here. So 231, 711, 376, 182. Okay, let's just start with A. Um, what we need to do, what, you know, I'm going to ignore all those questions for a minute. Let's just get to, to business. To figure out what Abe thinks is fair. Like, how do you know which of these things he thinks is fair? Well, to figure it out, you've got to add those up, all the values for Abe first, that first row. Got to add them all up and divide by four. Because there are four players in this game, right? Not three. You got to add up all the value for Abe and divide by four because that's what will be a fair amount for Abe. It's going to be different for each person. This one is. So add them up. Um, I don't have a calculator. What is that? 9, 42, 12, 11, 11, 42. Is it 15 bucks? Yeah. Okay, 15 bucks. So they all add up to $15 uh, for the, so $15. And then you got to divide that by four because the total amount of all of them is $15 and there's four people. So by four, is it five? 375? Yeah. That's right, 375. So for Abe, any piece that's 375 or more is fair. So that would be this piece and this piece. Let me slow down for a minute. So everybody see what I'm doing there? So I added up, you know, Abe is saying, I think piece X is worth $2.31, you know, et cetera. So I added them all up. So Abe thinks the whole cake is worth 15 bucks, doesn't he? If you add all those up, it's kind of a bad 15. My fives aren't the best. So, so Abe thinks the whole cake is worth 15 bucks, 
And I divide, you always divide by the total number of people. That's fair, right? Divide by four. So he thinks, so, so if he thinks the whole cake is worth 15 bucks, divided by four people, he thinks everybody should get 375 or more, and that'd be fair share. So therefore, he thinks pieces Y or Z to his value system would be a fair share. If we gave him Y or we gave him Z, he would feel he was treated fairly, right? Let's go on do the same thing for, for player B. So for B, what is it? Four, four, four. That's easy. So that's 16 bucks divided by four, four. <laughs> so they're all fair. B thinks they're all equal. Do you know what that means? That means B cut the cake. What am I, what am I talking about? Remember, remember the little story I told you about how to get your kids to divide the cookie fairly? Right? Right? That's really true. I mean, if you should try it if you have nephews or <laughs> nieces or kids at home, right? Just literally, there's one cookie left, um, you know, one cookie left, and, you know, I've, I've experienced it both ways over the years, the fighting and Johnny and Abby, my two littlest ones. We've had five. We're down to the two littlest ones now. Johnny and Abby, and they're fighting over, you know, who gets the this and the that. And um, I remember when I first tried this, it was like magic. I said, no, you can divide the last cookie. Johnny cuts, Abby picks. And Johnny's, well, now he's 13, now he's 10. But they were, it was probably three years ago when I first did it, 10 and 7. So Johnny, the 10-year-old, he cooked the night. They didn't realize it at first. I said, Johnny cuts, Abby picks which side she wants after Johnny cuts. Do you get the idea? The, the cutter gets last pick. Do you get the significance? So that when Johnny took the knife, and started going down. Because before this, you know, somebody would cut. And he got more, you got more, all that crazy stuff that kids always do. But then when Johnny took the knife and started going, if he st when he started deviating a little bit, Abby wasn't mad. Abby was thrilled. Because she gets first pick. And Johnny was suddenly horrified. And Johnny became the, the youngest surgeon known to earth. He, he came back in a hurry. <laughs> and that, that, that cut, he brought it back. So that when it was done, in Johnny's mind... They were equal. You see, the cutter is going to make them equal in his mind because he gets last pick. Do you get the idea? That's how we know that B was the cutter because B made them equal in B's mind because B's going to get last pick. So to so know that, that, I'm not just being silly, this will be something we'll recognize in these problems. Whenever you have somebody that has the same numbers all the way across, they are what you call the divider. That's the formal word, the cutter, the one who divided the cake. They're the divider. They must have done the cuttings. Everybody get the feel of why, right? Because if, if you, you, whenever you're the cutter, you get last pick. So you're going to purposely make them equal because you know if you don't, the other people are going to take the better ones. So you'll purposely cut them even, at least in your value system. You'll cut them even because you know you get last pick. That, that, that method is, well, I'll write it later, it's formally called the divider-chooser method. One does the dividing, the other one does the choosing. And it does work like magic. It's great. All right, so come on down to C now. So C is Corey. So I'm going to have to work harder for C. 278, 437, 111, and 274. Is that what it is? Thank you. Adds up to be $11. And then divide by 4, 5, 50, 275? Yeah, thank you. 275. So 275. So I just add them up and divide by 4. So 275 is a fair share. So that would be the, this one, this one. Oh, not quite the 270. And we have to be that picky. I know it seems picky. It is. 274 is not quite a fair share in their eyes. So only X and Y. Let's go down to D. So D is 397. 397, 164, 175, 164. If you add those up, nine, nine bucks? Mm -hmm. Nine bucks, divide by four. What is that? 450, two, 225? Okay. 225. 225, so that'd be this one? Oh, just that one, huh? Okay, so, so now we can answer all their questions, I think. Um, which of the four slices are fair to Abe? Abe likes, you know, Y and Z. That's what we said. Which are four to, to uh, Betty, all four? Which are four to Corey, uh, fair to Corey, X and Y? 
and which are fair to Dana only x. And then explain why there is only one possible fair division of the cake. Okay, let's, let's think about how, is there a way to give everybody a piece up there and they, and they come away thinking they got a fair deal? Yeah, there is, huh? I think to, to describe what, what is fair, um, what, do, what do you guys think? Where, where, where should we start? Or what, do you guys got a fair division plan? Yeah, start with D, huh? Does that make sense? Because D's only got one, one that he or she thinks is fair. Only piece X. So, so if, if you want everybody to be happy, you got you to give D that piece. Because that's the only one he likes. So, okay, so we give D that piece. So, that, so piece X is out. I'll just write out. We've given away piece X already. Piece X goes to player D. Dana. Dana. Yeah, Dana. So anyway, what's next? How about, we, we could jump around, but how about player C? Look at player C. They, they like X or Y. X has already been given away. Give them Y. Does that make sense? They're going to get piece Y is going to go to player C. Had to be Y because they could have had X or Y and X is already gone. Uh, they, we'll, we'll, say, we'll come back to B. B can have any of them. B was the cutter, the divider. Come up to uh, player A. Player A can have Y or Z. Y has already been given away. Got to give them Z, right? So give Z here to, this one will be given out to player A. Z goes to A. So all that's left is, is piece W, but B likes them all. B did the cutting. B cut them all. B thinks they're all the same. Other people don't think so, right? Other people like frosting more, edge more, whatever. You know, there's other value systems. B thinks they're all equal in my mind. I did the cutting, so sure, I'm fine. I'm fine with any of them. So yeah, there we go. There's a fair division. And that's the only one. That's the only way it's possible because you had to, D had to have the X on you go. Is that good? So there is a way to give everybody. Everybody would feel they got a fair deal on that, wouldn't they? Nobody, nobody would complain. They would all think they had a fair shake. Good there. Questions on that? All right, so we added. Okay, so we have this uh, sub sandwich, half vegetarian, half meatball. Jared and Carla jointly bought the half meat, half veggie, 12 inch sub, 14 bucks. They plan to divide the sandwich fairly using the divider chooser method. That's, that's what we've been talking about. One cuts, the other picks, divider chooser. Jared likes meatball. Now, here we go into their value system. Jared likes meatball three times as much as veggie. Carla is a vegetarian and does not eat meat. Assume that Jared doesn't know that Carla is a vegetarian. That's weird. Assume also that the sandwich is cut along its width. Yeah, these are a little contrived. Um, okay, so um, what's to say? It's a question A. Determine how Jared should cut the sandwich. Okay, now this, you know, this might... I think this probably seems weird at first. What do they mean, how Jared should cut the sandwich? Well, remember, remember with the cookie, with the kids with the cookie, what will the cutter do? Yeah. Has anybody turned in any car keys to you? Car keys. Anybody got any, anybody car keys sitting next to their desk or anything? No? I haven't got any. I'll tell you, you know, you know the main office? Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. So uh, remember the cookie with the kids, and how will the cutter, how will Johnny cut that cookie when Abby's watching and getting first pick? The cutter gets last pick. So if Jared's the cutter, Jared should cut. So remember, the cutter gets last pick. That's what divider chooser method means. Cutter gets last pick. So if, if Jared's going to cut it, and he knows that Carla's going to pick, what will Jared do? He will cut it equal in his value system, Right? Because he gets last pick in his value system, how he values things. He'll cut it equal. So wherever he makes the cut, it'll be equal in his value system. Now, what does that mean? Does he, will, will Jared just cut it right down the middle? No, right? Because that wouldn't be, it's equal amount of sandwich, yeah, but it's not equal value to Jared because he likes meatballs better, doesn't he? He would be afraid that Carla would, would pick the meat half and then he'd be stuck with the veggie half. Now, we know she's not going to do that. She's a vegetarian. Why is he going to lunch with somebody he doesn't even know that about? <laughs> that's, that's obviously weird, right? Yeah, you know, 
uh, we, we, and we can see from this, from this problem that all these math methods, they can seem kind of stupid in, in a sandwich lunch example. They're really made for inheritances, especially in hostile situations, right? If everybody gets along and everybody knows everybody and likes everybody and is trying to do good for others, well, yeah, then you don't need all the math. You can just talk and, hey, you like veggie, I like meat, here you go. It's all good. But the truth is life isn't always like that, right? When they, you know, when nations go to war and, you know, I, told, I think I mentioned, I listen to Churchill's biography as I drive around and they're, they're talking about how they're going to divide up Europe you know, with Stalin. You know, Stalin isn't a friendly guy. He doesn't come to, to lunch and think about others. He doesn't think about what Churchill and FDR value. So, so, so the math is supposed to come in in a hostile situation and break things up fairly, even then. It's a little goofy in the lunch situation. All right, so we'll pretend that, that Carla and Jared don't really want to do good for each other and don't really know each other at all. So Jared then, in that situation, would be afraid to cut it in the middle. He doesn't know what Carla likes. And he's afraid if he did that cut, there's a lot more value over here in the meat to him, a lot more than half, right? He thinks it's three times as valuable. He'd be afraid that she'd grab that half, and then he'd be stuck with less than half the value. So he'll cut it half value. Well, where's that? Well, for let's do the, remember what we do when it, isn't he three? Where is it? Yeah, three times, there it is. Jared likes meatball three times. What do we do with the three times thing? 3x, yeah. So if you, if you say, well, this half is 3x, and that half, to Jared, anyway. To Jared's value, it's a Jared there. To Jared's value system, just like we did with the thing with the cake a minute ago, right? 3x and x, okay, and then remember, you add them up. x plus 3x is the total $14, 14 yeah, $14, total value of the whole sandwich. So I'm just trying to figure out Jared's values, right? So that would be 1x and 3x, 4x is 14 Divide by 4, x is, what is that, uh, 350? Yeah. 350. So x is 350. So bring that back. That means this is 3 times 350, and this is just 350. So this half is, to Jared anyway, is 350, and this half is 3 times 359, 1050? 1050. That's how Jared sees it. He says, hey, look, the meat half is worth 1050, the veggie half is worth 350 because because meat's three times as much as, as veggie to Jared. That's what he thinks. And you add that up, that's $14 total. That's how Jared sees it in his value system. Okay, so what does that mean then? That means he's not going to cut it in the middle, is he? He's going to cut it somewhere where it'll be equal dollars in his value system. So what does that mean? That means he's going to move the knife to the right a little bit, isn't he? He's going to go into the meat a little bit and cut it so that it's all the veggie and a little bit of meat till it totals seven bucks. And then the right side will be just meat, seven bucks. He's going to cut it somewhere where it's seven bucks, seven bucks to make 14 bucks even Steven. Well, how do you know where that is? Where's seven bucks, seven bucks? And it's okay if I erase that. Seven bucks, seven bucks. Well, if this, if this part is 350. Okay, and 1050, remember this is three equal sections, right? This is X, this is X, 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 even Steve, remember it's 3X? I'm just, I'm just doing the 3X, writing it out. Okay, that means from 6 to 12, 6 to 12, in three equal sections. So from 6 to 12 is a total of 6, divided into three equal sections, that's 2 per section. You with me? See what I just did there? I divided... From, I, went, I went six inches of, of meat sandwich from six, right? First six inches is veggie. Last six inches from six inches to 12 inches. That's all meat, okay? And remember, this is three X and X. Jared's value system, three times as much. So I'll break, I'm breaking this into three equal parts then. From six to 12, six inches divided by three equals two inches per, per. So this would be, right there would be eight, right there would be 10, and then 12 at the end. You with me? So from six to eight, 8 to 10, 10 to 12. That's three equal sections of two inches each. Each of those is an X. Right? So where's Jared going to make the cut? Right here at 8 inches. Why? Because that's 2X and 2X. Equal value to Jared, isn't it? They're both going to be $7. Remember, X is 350. We, we solved it earlier. X is 350. So this will be... X and X, 350, 350, seven bucks. 
The other side, x and x, 353, 57 bucks. He's going to cut it at 8 inches. That's where he's going to make the cut. Because that'll be, in his value system, 7 bucks, 7 bucks. All the veggie, 350, and a third of the meat. All right, a third of 1050 is another 350, 350, 350, 7 bucks of sandwich to him. And then the two thirds of this, the 350, 350, 7 bucks also. That's where Jared will make the cut, right there. So, where is that? So, he's going he's gonna to make one section go from 0 to 8. Here it is right here, 0 to 8, and the other section, slice 2, that's S1, S2, slice 1, slice 2. Slice 1 will go from 0 to 8 inches, right? You with me on that? That's, that's, that's this, whoops, that's this piece right here. This is the first, from 0 to 8 inches. That'll be his first slice, and the other one will be this slice back here, 8 to 12 inches. Much smaller, but equal value to him. 0 to 8, 8 to 12. Is that Okay. So that's what he'll do. Now, there's more questions. Carla will pick slice one, which is the zero to eight. So she'll, she'll take that half because she likes veggie only. Okay, and then the final question, what is the value of slice one, the you know, zero to eight slice, to... Carla. Get rid of this stuff. So what is... So that's what Carla will do. She'll pick slice one. So Jared will just get slice two. He'll get the two-thirds of the meat sandwich, which he thinks is even. He thinks that's worth you know, half a value. But what is the, the... Carla will get the whole veggie and one-third of the meat. What is that worth to Carla? What's, what's the monetary value of slice one, the zero to eight slice that Carla will take? What is that worth to her? Everything. Do y'all see that? Remember, she only values veg. She's a vegetarian. She's not going to touch that meat. Right? That meat is just garbage to her. The whole fourteen. You know, the sandwich was fourteen dollars, right? The whole fourteen dollars to Carla is tied up in the in the veggie part, isn't it? That's how she sees it. She's basically paying fourteen dollars for the veggie half. That's all she values. The rest is garbage. So. What does that mean? The, that slice is worth the Carla? The whole four two. She thinks she got the whole value. That's how she feels. She definitely got a fair share in her value system. She got all the value in her value system. And Jared will get the right half, which he thinks is worth half, 750, or 7, 350, 350. So there's the end of that problem. Does that make sense? On that? Are we good? All is well? All right, so that's a little bit